Jeez. God. The, the hell are these things? Come on, Rouse. 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 Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars, and, well, nobody else today, just Curious Cars. And, um, where to begin? Okay, obviously, in front of me, I've got a 1989 Holiday Rambler Imperial 27 Class C Motorhome, which of course we'll get into in a minute. Uh, I'll give you a quick update on everything else first. Uh, number one, uh, there's friggin' rabbits everywhere. Everywhere. I mean, it's like cockroaches in the front yard. We've got two over here. They're just standing there and looking menacing. You know, there's another one over there. There were deer. There were, you yeah, had the deer back, which, you know, is a blessing of sorts because I just recently bought an AR-10. Uh, something I said I wouldn't buy because I think it's a strange platform, but I did anyway. And I've been looking for a reason to test it out. So it's nice to know that the deer are back and we'll see how they react to uh, that particular implement. Uh, but we'll get into that in a little while. Um, very quickly, some news. First of all, the weather is absolute shit. I mean, it is the worst of the worst what a, like the end of june i mean this is not a surprise this is not you know oh my god we've got some unusual weather for this time of year no the weather they absolutely sucks giant it just sucks and it's bad and uh, it's hot it's humid we've got a roasting tropical sun and uh, this is my least favorite time of year and of course this is a big part of what's driven me uh, to be doing this particular video today on this particular vehicle uh, it's probably why I sold my house look don't get me wrong I love Florida I really do I mean my dad moved down here in 1971 that we all fought well he did he built a house in 71 we were in Chicago Chicago. Uh, the, we came down permanently in 76, and I lived in Naples all my life since then. I mean, I tried to escape a few times, but back I came. And, uh, you know, yeah, Florida, even in recent years, especially since the whole COVID thing, has been something of a haven for people who kind of enjoy freedom. So it's, uh, it's an important thing. Uh, that said, and nothing's going to change on this, the weather is absolute shit in the summer. It's terrible. I hate it. And I can't wait to get the hell out of town. And uh, that's where we're at right now. So uh, the house deal is ongoing. There's endless little issues here and there that I've been attending to. I've had to move, which absolutely, I mean, moving is the worst. And I've got a lady friend who, you know, if, if there's a bad situation, there is no doubt she has this extreme ability to make it worse. And she's very, very good at that. Very, very skilled. Uh, we're in Peter's yard today. I don't know if he's here. I mean, I see signs that he's here, but I had thought he was off gallivanting around Europe with one of his Tinderellas. So uh, maybe he'll show up. Maybe he won't. Uh, he was giving talk the, uh, the other week of having new goats. Uh, I, you know, we had lunch, we were, you know, discussing things, and, and he brought this up out of nowhere. Uh, it seems he misses the goat, so he's the only one. And uh, for all I know, there's goats running around now, but I don't think so. I think uh, he would probably wait till after he came back from uh, wherever the hell he's at before he'd do that to me. But you never know with Peter, so uh, we'll keep an eye out on that. And um, uh, real quick, speaking of goats, the goat flask giveaway, man. I had 20 flasks to give away. I thought we were going to get like maybe 
a hundred entries. Well, it's ten times that. There's more than a thousand entries. So I'm going through them now. I'm trying to narrow them down. I don't know if I could even print out that many emails to draw them out of a hat. So I'm probably just going to have to sign numbers, uh, go through and do it that way. But either way, uh, I'm doubling the number of flasks we're going to give away. We're going to give away all 40 of them because there's just... It's just silly to give away 20 at this point, and maybe we can pressure Penelope to come up with some more flasks. Uh, I get onto this vehicle, but my glasses are now fogged up, so I don't even know if I've got it in the viewfinder or not. Uh, but anyway, look, the, the, the goat flask updates will come. Uh, once I do the closing on the house, I think that's going to be Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm going to take a couple of weeks off, get the flask thing together, get them mailed out, and uh, try to assemble a video with the um, uh, with the stuff that you guys have sent in. And thank you so much for sending stuff in. I mean, I got to tell you, the only thing that makes me happy anymore, the only thing that keeps me going is uh, being able to uh, bitch, moan, and complain in these videos. It, it really is cathartic. Uh, it's important. And God bless you all. Anyone who subscribes, who, you know, sent in an entry, I can't tell you what it means to me. It really... Um, yeah, I mean, it's just a little bit humbling. I can't believe there's anybody out there who wants to see some crabby old ex-used car salesman complain about things, but um, God bless you that you do. Uh, and we're going to dive now and leap directly into this. So this, look, here it is. This is the motorhome that I bought off Toothless Dave. Uh, Toothless Dave is no longer toothless, by the way. He uh, ended up getting teeth. It's a long story, uh, but um, for a long time he was toothless, and it was a big deal, and everybody was a little bit freaked out by it because the guy is a retired systems engineer for IBM. It's not like he doesn't have the dough. I mean, he could go out and buy as many new teeth as he wanted, but for years he lived with that. And uh, finally, a friend of a friend just put the pressure on until he went off and got new teeth. That is irrelevant to the story. Dave likes buying shit from weird auctions, particularly Copart, where they deal in mostly wrecked vehicles, but as in the case of this RV, a donation vehicle. And he bought this thing. It was covered in mold. It still is, actually, even though it's been cleaned a couple times. And uh, I ended up buying it from Dave with the purpose of using it for Sebring, because we used to stay at the Seven Hotel in Sebring, which is right on the track, and it's a neat place, but it was inordinately expensive. And at a certain point, I just didn't feel like we were getting the service that we should have for the money. So I thought, fuck them. I'm going to buy an RV, uh, even if it's a cheap thing, and we're going to tow the car up with that, and we're going to use it. And that's what I did. And I ended up with this thing. And here it is now. So... <sighs> On to the curious cars overhaul, you know, so I've decided, okay, I'm going to sell the house. I've got a place to move to, which I did. I moved my lady friend in there. She's got a tremendous sense of entitlement. She's very upset about certain things that she's sure that I'm going to handle for her, which I am. And uh, while I'm doing that, I thought, okay, I'm going to take this. Uh, I paid 2500 bucks for this thing. Okay, which means that Dave basically got it for nothing, which is fine. And uh, I think I scored because it's actually a pretty cool RV. It's got pretty good bones. And uh, I figured, you know, okay, so I'm closing on the house. I've got some money in the bank. Am I going to buy another RV or am I going to keep going on this one? And after much deliberation, I decided the hell with it. Uh, there's a lot of good reasons to make this thing uh, into something that can handle little trips. And this is going to be the RV that I used to tool around, probably no more than the southeastern United States. I'm going to do a few videos from the road. I'm going to do a few um, uh, car reviews of people that, you know, I set up beforehand, and uh, we're going to see how it all goes. But uh, long story short, here it is. So it's a 1987 Holiday Rambler Imperial uh, what the hell is it? 27. So it's 27 feet. Uh, Holiday Rambler is a pretty big deal in the RV world, or at least they were. Uh, they began life in 1953 as a corporation uh, after very humble roots, starting out of a guy's chicken coop somewhere in buttfuck Indiana. Pardon my language, uh, but it's true. And <laughs> I mean, they were in on the ground floor of the uh, post-war RV 
uh, craze, which, uh, you know, started and, you know, GIs came back and the RV hitting the road became a thing. And Holiday Rambler was there. And they came up with a few innovations uh, that really set the trend for the next 40 years. Uh, the main one was the Aluma frame. And what the Aluma frame is, and this one has it, even it's 89. So, you know, you're talking almost... Uh, 50 for the almost 40 years past uh, when the company was uh, started, but the uh, entire God, where to begin? All right, look, I'm gonna let me back up for a second. There's three main different classifications of RV. Okay, there's a class A, which is a full chassis. You know, you've seen these things. They look like Greyhound buses, basically. You know, they're they're called diesel pushers as well. Although they don't have to be diesel, uh, but they are full-framed truck chassis things with 20 or 22-inch wheels, and uh, they're enormous. They're heavy-duty. They have a bunch of sliders, and uh, it's the kind of stuff that Peter, guys like Peter, have. You know, who have uh, enough money to light their cigars with the hundred-dollar bills. Then there is a Class B. And that is more of the um, the van camping type thing, you know, uh, whatever you want to call it. Uh, yeah, vans with maybe high roofs, maybe not, that have been converted uh, to be uh, motorhomes. Actually, you see the uh, Mercedes Sprinter gets used for that on the high end. And, uh, of course, there's much, much cheaper ones on the low end. Uh, I guess a Volkswagen uh, bus camper could be classified as a Class B. And then there's this one, the Class C. Uh, which is probably the nicest sort of in-between of the two. And what that does is take uh, basically a van chassis, could be a truck chassis, and puts a camper back on it. And, uh, you know, you can usually tell a Class C motorhome by that overhang above the cabin where the uh, uh, there's a bed in. If you ever watched the movie The Blues Brothers, you remember they had a Class C motorhome uh, with three uh, or four uh, of the good old boys hanging out the front window I'm looking at Jake and Elwood. But anyway, so this is a Class C, and I've determined that it's probably the perfect starting point for my little project uh, because it's cheap, and I'm cheap, and I'm going to be cheap. <laughs> I can't help myself. Uh, I could go out and I could buy something a little more high tech, but the hell with it. Why bother? I've got this thing sitting here uh, and uh, I'm going to go over some of the stuff that I'm going to do to it as we go. So, um, all right, look, I'm going to pause there for a minute. I'm going to wipe the horrible, humid, shitty sweat off my brow. I'm going to clean my glasses so I can see again. And then we're going to get right back into it. So bear with me one moment. All right, so we're back, and let's just knock this thing out and get going. So, look, here it is. This is basically the before picture. You know, when you see the, uh, uh, you know, when they overhaul some broad on the Internet, and you have this sort of fugly-looking thing, and then the next thing you know, a bunch of, you know, questionable dudes start working on this thing with jackhammers and and uh, makeup and whatever else they do and all of a sudden you've got this good looking broad well that's what I'm gonna try and do to this RV um, I dug it out of the woods this morning it's been sitting in my friend Al's house who's been kind enough uh, to store it for me after Peter sold his uh, storage location and uh, you know Al has been an absolute champion so I gotta look after him at some point but anyway, I dug it out of the woods. It was covered with spiders and horrible other insects. Uh, it was terrifying, but I got it going, and uh, here it is. So look, you can see that the basic motivation of this thing is a Ford Econoline 350. I didn't even bother cleaning it or taking any of the leaves off because, again, this is the before picture. Uh, but that is the cab over part, and you can see the front end of that Ford there. Being an 89, it's got a little bit of that vintage shit that I like. You know, it's got the square headlights, the square grill, chrome bumper. Uh, I had to replace that mirror, which was a pain in the ass, but I found one and uh, it's all fine. Now, what drew me to this camper in the first place was the aluminum construction. Uh, unlike a lot of these things that use kind of a corrugated fiberglass, tinny, crappy shit, uh, this whole thing, this whole 
<clears throat> aluminum frame behind the cab is built out of aluminum and aluminum panels and that includes the roof and uh, that's one of the reasons that I really liked it. Uh, another reason is that tag axle. Now I'm going to put eight new tires on this thing which sucks because it's expensive particularly in you know today's inflationary world uh, but it's also a bit of peace of mind so that's going to happen soon. Uh, but you see the second axle that runs behind the first and uh, those are the dually wheels and the front axles. Those are the ones that drive the truck. Uh, these things in the back are just sort of along for the ride. But what they do is increase stability on the highway. So I'm running along at 60, 65, 70. 75, 80 is probably the most this thing will go buried to the ground. But again, I'm not in any kind of hurry. Uh, but the important thing is that that axle in the back is going to keep this thing uh, from, you know, hey, if there's wind, if there's issues, uh, it's going to be able to uh, keep it a little bit more stable. Uh, I also have to get this ladder fixed. It's uh, completely broken. Uh, you know, half the uh, steps are kind of not. I, I haven't gotten up the roof because I've been terrified of it. So I'm going to have an aluminum welder take care of that. Uh, I did buy a new spare tire, which is in the back behind that thing. Uh, you know, the... Okay, so look, it's got typical RV stuff in here, and it's not working currently, which is a pain in the ass. Uh, and you can see it's all in pieces. Is a uh, an Onan generator, and uh, obviously this is going to have to work before I hit the road. So I'm going to have to get somebody to fix that. But that will provide comfort and interior power for me when I'm not able to hook up to shore power, as they call it, which is you know an RV park that has. Uh, outlets that let you plug in and uh, the, the, where you plug in. Okay, so first of all, look, here. here's all the poop stuff, which is disgusting, but also necessary. Uh, that's in this little bumper compartment here. Over here in this compartment is the power stuff, and uh, that's obviously important. Uh, when you plug into a wall at one of these RV parks, that's going to supply this thing with power, uh, which is going to let you run the roof air conditioner, and that's all very important. Uh, um, what else can I show you? As we go along the side, you can see, I mean, there's all the mold and stuff. That's a little compartment over there. This is where you put the, uh, uh, I don't know if that's fuel. I think that's fuel. Yeah, this is where the gas goes. You can see it's all moldy, so all that has to be cleaned up. Uh, I've got two water setups. One of them is for full-time water. You put a hose in it, you leave it connected, you got full-time water. Another one is for filling the tank. And uh, in here, this is the propane stuff, which uh, propane stuff in RV is pretty crafty because it doesn't just, I mean, we got a giant wasp's nest in there. It's actually a miracle there's no wasps. That wasn't there the last time, so uh, truly I should be opening that and running for my life. I don't know what the hell made them leave, but thank God they did. Uh, but anyway, the propane in this doesn't just handle the stove and cooking, uh, but will also run the refrigerator, which is magic to me. Uh, you've got um, more compartments here. I don't know what the hell goes in here. I don't even know if I can open it, but we'll see. Yeah, just the, that's the compart. That's where the uh, propane fill goes. So uh, we'll have to have that tank filled up before we leave. And in here, I don't think it's open. It's not, but that's where the battery system is. Uh, we'll have a look under the hood while we're walking around. Uh, this is another thing that drew me to this particular RV. Uh, was its simplicity? Uh, it was old enough that it's running. Oh God! I never very hard to see in here. Oh God, sorry about all this. Anyway, look, uh, you can't see shit in here, but here's the scoop. This is a 460 Ford, uh, which is a terrific old big block Ford engine. Probably the last year of it. I, it was replaced with the V10, uh, which is also a great engine, but not quite as reliable or bulletproof as this old boy. And uh, I like that. It's also an engine that I can fix on the side of the road in a pinch if I need to. Uh, it's also made it to an old uh, three-speed Ford automatic uh, transmission, which, you know, means that the thing maxes out at a pretty crappy speed. It doesn't have real uh, overdrive, but uh, it's also absolutely bulletproof. And again, that's what I'm looking for when I'm up on the road. Uh, you can see up there in the time, and there's so much work to do on this thing. I'm going to have to buff it out. I don't know how far I'm going to take it. Uh, I had Marco, a friend of mine, who's a very angry, angry man. Uh, he buffed out the cabin before it sat in the woods for a while, and it actually looked pretty great. Uh, so we'll see if we can't get it back there. I may have him do the back as well. 
sell, that, that's going to cost a fortune. And uh, I don't know if I'm going to start decking around with new decals or not, but I'm thinking about it. Uh, you can see the uh, awning up there. I, I can't pull that out single-handedly. I need a guy to help me with it. But uh, that's still in good shape from 89 because Holiday Rambler, again, was a pretty high-end company. And they used pretty high-end materials. And that thing has lasted for a very long time. Uh, we'll do the cab real quick before you got some rust repair here. You can see where that mirror goes through. And I'll go over to the other side. I'm actually willing to drive this thing, so I won't bother with that. All right, so look, let's just have a look inside the RV, and we'll see what we got and what's going to change. Got a deadbolt up here. Got a screen door, all very nice. When I opened this yesterday, there were ants living in the door jam, which were terrifying. Uh, I've got to fix the steps. They're supposed to electrically retract, which uh, they're not, and it's a pain in the ass. Uh, you can see the exhaust for the engine comes out in front of the wheels. Uh, the exhaust for the generator comes out in the back. Right, have a look inside. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do, or one of the first things, is replace this disgusting carpet. Because I can't even imagine how much DNA, juice, horrors. This is the original carpet from 89. God knows what's buried in it. Uh, here's your breakfast nook. You can see there's some sort of dead insect on top of it. This is what I'm using to hold the stairs up for the moment. Uh, this does convert into a bed, which, you know, again, I don't know for humans, but for something. Uh, over here you have a little chair. I used to use that to change into my race clothes. Uh, you've got all these curtains everywhere. From the, the curtains, you know, they vanished from there, but it used to have curtains. Now it's got blinds. Uh, well, they all have blind, and whatever. Anyway, uh, up here you can see all the crap, you know, like a rug and tables and chairs and all the stuff I used to set up. Uh, open up this guy here. You've got a nice 13-inch tube TV from 89. Uh, I'm going to be updating that, obviously, because you just have to. But uh, anyway, there it is for now. You get into these compartments here. You got some crap coffee cups and tins. You got... Over here, what is this? Model something or another. I don't know, that's a TV mount or something. But anyway, those things are the levelers so I can make the uh, RV level. Uh, the, again, Holiday Rambler pioneered the fridge in an RV, but they're pretty common by now. Uh, this thing is a do Dometic, Dometech, I don't know what the hell you call it. Uh, it's very interesting. It'll run on electric or probe. It actually has a three-way. It'll run on 12-volt which I've never actually successfully done. Uh, it'll run on propane, which I've done once or twice, and it'll run on, of course, short power. Uh, it does work pretty well. Thank God I don't have anything disgusting in here yet. Well, there's some bottled water. But it's made in uh, Sweden, which I think is absolutely fascinating for the night. I can't imagine these things are made in Sweden anymore. Uh, you've got lights up here. This little crank will lift up the... Uh, uh, aerial for the TV, which obviously is not happening anymore. Uh, here's the uh, AC unit if I want to uh, run the overhead air conditioning. Nice stuff. Works good. Uh, over here you can see the... Uh, I put a couple levels up so I know the uh, condition of the cabin. Uh, we got a clock, which is a piece of shit. And uh, some more stuff up there. Uh, the ceiling uh, coming down a little bit, that's obviously something that I'm going to have to work on. Don't know if it's from leaks or if it's just from age. So uh, either way, we should figure it out. I'm told it shouldn't leak because it's got an aluminum roof. Uh, going more to the back, we've got cabinet. This is where you put your clothes and shit. I've got all kinds of crap in there. You have drawers here that are full of crap. I got free on because the AC leaks. I've got little pull out there that'll get you to the water place uh, this was nice it came with all of the original books and such uh, and I've got an electric turkey knife which is important uh, but anyway you've got all these books which give you part numbers and shit which are helpful uh, going more towards the back you've got a microwave lovely stuff you've got a little stove here which works on propane Jesus which I have used and works well uh, you got a couple of sinks yeah, all very nice with little chopping boards over them. I use this to hold, yeah, to fling on the ground and use uh, that hole. There's a core rig machine and some raid. You need that. Uh, here's a shower, which I think actually works fine. Um, 
this is not really high-end living, but it's going to be fine for me. And uh, if you go in here, I've got my tiki torches. Uh, but this is the bathroom where, uh, you know, things happen. Uh, in the back, I don't know who originally owned this RV. I mean, I think it was set up for like little Richard and his wife. If Ricky and Lucy were four foot nine and 102 pounds each, then this would be the perfect RV for them. I'm not a big guy and I don't fit on this thing back here. So I'm going to have to do something with the beds to, to make them livable in a way that uh, I can stand. Uh, I've got cabinets full of pillows blankets, that sort of thing. We've got a light here that looks like, when I turn this on, it's bright, and it makes the RV look like the Amityville Horror House from, you know, 10 or 15 yards away. Uh, you got speakers back there, whatever. Anyway, this is all very good building material. I'm going to be pulling up the carpet and uh, putting in probably some of that luxury vinyl tile crap. I'm going to be fixing the roof. Uh, obviously, I got to put tires on it. Obviously, I got to make it not run like shit. Uh, but, um, you know, when the RV's in order, then I'm going to be able to get on the road and do that next uh, gen of curious car stuff that I want to do. So, all right, there it is. That's the inside. I'm going to pause for a minute. We're going to hop in the cab and go for a spin. Bear with me. All right, let's go for a spin. You know, here in the back, you can see it's got the uh, receiver hitch, which is good, because I'm probably going to tow some kind of a car behind me. Probably a Miata, something small and light, something that isn't going to stress this thing too much. So, uh, But we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, over here, you've got the shit pipe coming out. That's what you connect to your sewage and whatnot. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Let's go for a spin. So one of the things that I like about this RV is just how vintage it is. I mean, be look, if I had an 89 Ford van, I'd be thrilled, you know. Uh, but I'm actually going to use this thing like it's a true modern RV. And hopefully, being a pretty solid platform, it's going to uh, hold up. But uh, either way, you can see it's pretty good shape. needs a good cleanup. But, you know, obviously the elastic here is gone. But I can fix shit like that. Maybe trim this up a little bit, make it nice. But uh, all in all, it's in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got a couple of, uh, yeah, I know, captain's chairs, what I got, with Captain Kirk, Captain Steubing, uh Captain whatever the guy was in that hijacked ship. I'm the captain now. Uh, but either way, I'm going to sit in those things and, and hopefully be fairly happy. Uh, also has a nice vintage Ford steering wheel with cruise control in it. Uh, I had Marco install these... Um, addendum gauges because I don't trust the weird little factory gauges. He hasn't hooked up the voltmeter, but we've got oil pressure and water, which is great. And he's left, uh, you know, the, uh, pigtail for whatever nicely wrapped around and in my way there so god bless him uh, we also have the original floor mats because of course rvs don't get used this you know that much uh this one did i mean eighty thousand miles you know not bad for an 89 but definitely they did use the thing uh this morning again it was choking coughing spitting so hopefully that um that's uh that cease now we'll see uh over here you got your washer washers wipers you got your headlights you got full gauges which i don't trust at all so they've been you know usurped by those down there this auxiliary start thing if i press that uh this has a two battery system it ties the batteries together uh if the uh, starting battery goes bad i can press this and get the juice from the uh, coach battery in the back uh the fujitsu 10 radio it sounds like more of a Japanese, you know, separatist group that does terrorist crimes, the Fujitsu 10. But either way, it's one of these things that works in conjunction with the coach. And there's a bunch of speakers in the back. Uh, I'm going to, you know, I thought when I first got it, I was going to put in like an Alpine CD. I was going to go all period correct. And uh, I've, I've abandoned that plan. Uh, my friend Chris, who's just a terrible, terrible human being. One of the worst people on earth. I mean, no, no, I'm not even being dramatic about it. He just is. But he owns an audio shop, and I'm going to have him upgrade the technology in this car. Uh, the AC for the moment isn't working. It works when you charge it, but it leaks out. i got to find the leak, but when it does work, it, it works pretty good. Uh, you got these little things here. you got a nice little compartment for... 
is down there. Maybe an owner's man. We got our owner's manual down there. This is a good place to put shit if you need it. I've got an ashtray and lighter, cigarettes, and this little thing on top of the doghouse, which if you need to work on the engine, you pull this out and you'll see the back of the engine there. Up top, you got more lights. You got big visors. You got these button tufted things. You know, it's all very nice. Anyway, let's fire this up and see if it's running now. Yeah, for the moment it seems all right. Let's see if we're bogging down when we drive. Uh, the biggest drawback to this to me is the three-speed transmission. It would be so much nicer if it had overdrive. Uh, it would make all the difference. I could run at 80 pretty comfortably instead of running at 75 turning too many RPMs. Uh, the uh, windshield is filthy from sitting in the woods, but fortunately after Dalton's windshields, I'm used to it and it really doesn't bother me that much. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Actually, let me lean over. Oh my God, this, uh, put this window down, get a little airflow and put one of these smoking vent windows here, which I also like. That's a nice Ford thing from the 80s. So this thing has always run fantastic. That's why it was very strange this morning when it didn't. Uh, I found it really unsettling. Almost didn't do the video. Yeah, but it seems to have found itself. All right, so it seems to be running fine now. So I don't know what the hell was. Maybe the low battery in the coach thing. Uh, obviously, we can't see through the windshield, but I'm well trained in that after Dalton's uh, windows. So look, here's the thing that I like about this particular RV. Uh, with the tag axle, with the big, you know, E350 platform that it's got, um, it's, it's very smooth. It's very easy to navigate this thing down the road. Uh, just like you would a van. You don't even really think about the fact that you got 20, you know, five feet of uh, motorhome behind you. It just runs down the road nice. And that's why I've decided to sort of upgrade this thing, make it a runner and take it on the road instead of, you know, selling it off to someone and, uh, you know, starting with something a little bit more modern. The hell with it. We're going to have fun with this thing. And that's the plan. So after it gets updated, after it gets, um, you know, modern stereo and, you know, proper fresh tires and maybe an oil change. I've got some Rotella over there, even though it's not a diesel. I've always liked that 1540 Rotella. Uh, but I think it's going to be a fine piece. You know, no shake from the wheel, even on these old tires. Uh, you can tell it was just a very good platform when it's uh, when it was made, and uh, enough of that remains today that it's still a good platform. So, uh, as long as it's not um, overheating or having other issues, it should get me around just fine. And I'm not really going to be in any rush, so running at 60 to 70 miles an hour isn't going to be a problem. That's basically full throttle. I mean, I've got the thing buried, and. <laughs> It's not really very uh, fast, but again, it doesn't have to be. That's not the point. If you're in a hurry when you're driving this thing, don't drive it. You got a problem. You know, the only reason you should be behind the wheel of this thing is if you're not in a hurry, and uh, that is exactly how I intend to be in the fairly near future. So, uh, look, I'm not going to torture you with any more driving around. Thank you so much for entering the goat flask thing. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, again, through all of the mayhem going on in my life right now, these videos are the one thing that's keeping it all together, keeping me happy and uh, keeping me going forward. So I can't tell you what, um, what you guys all mean to me. I read every comment. I respond to a few, but I read them all. And uh, it just is absolutely humbling that anybody at all uh, wants to listen to this crabby old bastard talk. I'm sticking to the wheel. 
That's obviously something I'm going to have to address. That's disgusting. Absolutely gross. But uh, but anyway, I can't tell you what it means to me that anyone at all is watching these things or subscribing to this channel. I promise to go through the goat flask entries. I'm going to make a video out of the stuff that I get from them, and uh, we will get those sent out. You know, within the next couple of weeks after I'm able to determine 40 winners, and maybe I can pressure Penelope into coming up with a few more flasks, and we'll see how we dispose of those. So, again, thank you very much, oh, the angry people, for having a look. We appreciate it. I'll keep you updated as we go, and uh, we will uh, see you with the next one. Take care.